Okay, there's a question here, a more sort of uh, computational question that's about um, if I look at uh, higher order cellular automata. So remember, cellular automaton is something where in one dimension, it's just looking a, um, um, it's just looking, oh gosh, I made that same mistake before. Uh, it's just looking at um, uh, what happens one step back. It's saying, take, take the pattern of cells at a particular step and look at what happens uh, one step later. So the question that was asked is, have you studied higher order automata which look back two, three, four, or more steps in time? Actually, it just so happens that um, somebody contacted me recently, a person I've known for many years, um, about more or less that question. And I sent him something which I characterized as a Christmas gift which was an idea for a class of systems that um, uh, would look back more steps. There are definitely places where I found it useful to look back more steps. Let me show you uh, an example. Uh, let's see what I can find here. Um, oh boy, where is it? Um, uh, Let me um, let me see here. Okay, here's an example. This is looking. This is a cellular automaton that, instead of just looking at what happened on the previous step, it looks at the cell on the previous step, its left and right neighbors, and the cell in the middle on the step even before that. And it uses a very simple rule to include the effect of the cell two steps back. The rule it's using is just an exclusive or mod two type rule, um, which says if the if the, the 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 thing that should come out should be what you would expect from that triple of cells, XORed with the cell one step uh, in the earlier in the in the history. And so one feature of these particular rules is they are reversible in the sense that if you know the configuration of cells at a particular step, you can both figure out what the cells on a future step will be, and you can go backwards and figure out what the cells on previous steps will be. So it's a good kind of minimal model for sort of reversible computational processes. And you can, you can go and look at lots of different, uh, let's see, here's some examples of kind of reversible computational processes made with rules like this. Sometimes they're very simple to predict what's going to happen. Sometimes they're not. This idea of things which are at an underlying level reversible, but then when you see something like, like this one here, even though at an underlying level it's reversible, it turns into this complicated mess that you really have to do sort of irreducible computation to invert. So that's one use of, of um, cellular automata that look back more than one step. Let me see if I can find this thing that I just sent this uh, uh, fellow. Um, let me see where it would be. I'm sorry, I'm just taking me a moment to see if I can find it. Uh, um, hold on. Um, well, maybe I can do a search here. This is just from a few days ago, but I'm already forgetting. Um, well, if in doubt, um, let me... Uh, um, let me just do this. I am going to see if I can find it by doing a raw search in my email. Um, oh, yes, I put it in the cloud. Here we go. There it is. OK, that's why I couldn't find it. Um, all right. 
So the idea here, let me uh, pull this up. The idea here was to make what I was calling memory cellular automata, where you have the, um, uh, where you're looking at the cell and its two neighbors, and then you're looking at a triple of cells, the cell, the previous step, the step before that. And you do two things in the, in the rule. Let, let's just pull out this, um, let's pull out these cases here and look at them in a bit more detail. Um, let's uh, do this. Okay. Here we go. So this is a memory cellular automaton I just made up a few days ago. And um, this is, uh, um, so what I'm doing here is I'm looking at something which has uh, just a single, it needs to know both what the previous state was and, the st and two states before that. So this is using, and it needs two rules. So in this case, I'm using rule 30 in both, both dimensions, so to speak. So let's see what happens. I think I might have a better example here than I made, but if not, I can just do it right now. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, why don't I just do it? Um, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's, when in doubt, just write the code. Oh, here we are. I've got, I've got an example here. Um, so this is doing 500 steps, and I'm going to use rule 30 in both directions, so to speak. Boy, that's, that's super boring. That's okay. Let's try using rule 90 in both, in both directions. Oh, that's more fun. Wow, that's a cool picture. Look at that thing. Wow, really funky. Um, is that, I like that picture. Uh, I wonder if that's some, um, is it, is it a perfect nested picture? It probably is. It's a little hard to see because these things are actually, it's really kind of interesting because it's sort of a mixture of something that's nested with something that isn't. I'm going to save this notebook so I make sure that I don't lose this. Um, uh, let's see. Well, maybe we can try running this a bit longer and see whether, see whether it, well, let, let's run a bit shorter just to see what, what that looks like. Let's just run it 100 steps. And that's what it's doing. Okay, so it's a bit, it's a bit sort of dotty, so to speak. I'm going to try living a bit dangerously and run it for 1,000 steps just to see what that looks like. Um, and, uh, okay. Well, you know, the fact that it's hard to tell between, yeah, I think this is a, a, going to be a nice nested pattern. It's, its nesting rate is a bit weird. Actually, you know what? I can try just for fun. Let me try 500 steps and let's try not rule 90, but rule 150, which is another one of these um, uh, things that gives nested patterns. Now that is weird. That pattern is very similar to the previous pattern. Although it's a cool looking pattern. I really like these patterns. Let's try, okay, given that we've done this, let's try some other famous rules. Let's try rule 18. Uh, so remember, this is kind of the two-way version of this where it's, it's going, that's kind of weird. It's, so it's, it's, it's both, so what's happening here is it's kind of regular for a while and then kind of it, it makes a mess later on. So if we just run it for a little while, it would have looked probably pretty regular. Let's just run it for um, 100 steps. It probably is looking pretty regular. Um, and, uh, well, it actually isn't looking that regular even there. Let's try running. Let's try running for all sorts of different rules. So let's try running for just 100 steps. Let's just try running a sequence of rules. Let's make a table of the first. Let's, let's go up to rule. Let's just go. Um, n up to 30, for example. And let's just see what all these different rules produce. Okay, oops, I should have 
silly mistake. I should have labeled these things so we at least know what rule we're looking at. Um, and where did I do that? Ah, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this. Hmm, what's going on there? Where's that? Oh, that's the width. Two equals 100. Oh, I want to go into this there. And I'm a little confused here. That's the label right there. Okay. All right. So now, rule five, never the most distinguished rule, is uh, just making a checkerboard pattern. Okay. Rule 22, which is a sort of famous, pretty complicated rule, is doing all kinds of wild things. Um, let's try a few other famous rules. Um, let's try and remember this is this is using the same rule both in history and at a particular step. So I think rule 54 is one that got mentioned. That's okay. What the heck is that doing? Let's try running it a bit longer. That was 100 steps. Let's try running it for 500 steps. Okay. Just when we think we understand what's going to happen, totally weird. Okay, what's happening there is it's got sort of periodic wings, and then the center, it's got that structure that is doing something complicated. I don't know whether it's going to repeat, whether it's nested, what it is. And um, we could probably take here, we could probably say, in this, we could probably say, let's say this is, let's see, this is 500 steps, so let's say take that um, all, and then let's say, I don't know, let's say 350 to 650. Um, so now that will hopefully give us just the, oh, what did I do wrong? Um, uh, did I do something stupid here? Array plot. Um, That should be right. That is, well, let's ask the, um, oh, why did it think that the whole array plot is inside the take? Oh, that's the problem. Okay, there we go. Actually, I could have tightened this up a bit more. 400, uh, 600 here. Okay, so that's just showing that center column, but probably if we just looked at every other step, maybe, I don't know, let's try that. Uh, okay, it's getting a little bit clearer. Let's maybe look at every fourth step. Well, actually, let's look at every other step in space as well as in time. Okay, that's getting a little clearer. I don't know what it's doing, but it's getting a little clearer what's happening there. Um, we're seeing this region get wider. So I suppose we could try running this longer. Let's try running it for 2,000 steps. Again, living a bit dangerously here. And let's try doing this uh, around 1,000. So we want 1,000 minus 100 is 900. A thousand plus that is eleven hundred. Okay, so now we're going to try and home in on what's happening, um, the uh, uh, on that. Um, and unfortunately, we have to. Oh, did I miss? Did I do something really stupid here? Yes, I did something stupid. This should be nineteen hundred to twenty one hundred. And now I probably won't kind of look, have the camera aim off into the distance here, but I'll probably be able to find something close to what I was looking for. Okay, there we go. So now this is the adventure in the center of rule 54. And is it becoming periodic? I don't think so. Don't think so. But we can check that just for fun. Let's go ahead and check that. Uh, let's take this, 
and let's do a thing that's find transient repeat of that. And let's say comma three, and then let's find the lengths of the things that were found. Oh, what happened? Oh, I need to say with with t equals two thousand. There. Oh, 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 sorry. With t equals 2,000 and n equals 54. Okay, now it'll grind for a while, and I suspect it's not periodic, but we're going to know in a moment. Um, come on. And I'm wrong. Yet again, the computational animal outsmarted me. It is periodic with period 152. So the center region of this particular pattern is, in fact, periodic. So it's really kind of a surprise because lots of these patterns, you know, when we look back at something like this guy, it's definitely not periodic. It may be nested, but it's definitely not periodic. Anyway, the original prompt here, the original question was, what happens with cellular automata that uh, look back not just one step, but more than one step? And as I say, I just sort of define this notion of memory cellular automata um, that uh, uh, sort of use two different rules, a, a rule that is sort of a, a, a rule for the, um, the, current, uh, um, uh, the current step and asking how to, how to involve two previous steps. The, 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 the chap who contacted me had looked at a particular case, I think, of looking at the majority uh, of the cells in that sort of backward, backward sequence. And I was just thinking about, well, what happens if you generalize? So for example, here, just for fun, we could try doing something where we say, let's take two famous popular rules. And instead of, uh, instead of this, let's pick, let's pick rule 90 and rule 150. So we're going rule 90 in one direction. Oh, wow, look at that cool guy. That's really cool, I think. That's an interesting picture. So that's rule 90 in the, I think, horizontal direction, rule 150 in the vertical direction. Let's try that the other way around. Um, OK, very much the same thing. And let's try, uh, let's just try a couple of other famous rules. Let's just try rule 90 and rule 30. OK, oh, well. That makes something that looks very much like ordinary rule 30, although a bit sort of interpreted and modified. Let's try it the other way around, 90 and 30 the other way around. And it won't, there's no reason to think that looking at hit, well, there we go. So that was basically a rule 90, uh, uh, a rule 90 kind of setup. Let's try something like, I think rule 22 and rule 90 might be kind of fun together. Okay, that just made a complete mess. That's sort of the generic, well, it's got, it's got a little bit of structure in here that we can see. It's got a little bit of uh, kind of cool texturing there. And let's, let's try something like um, rule 22 and rule 18. Okay, so that makes something kind of dull. I think that's one of the generic patterns of rule 22. Looks a bit like that. Let's try, how about, how about rule 110 with itself, first of all? Ha! Huh. Practically nothing. How about rule 110 with rule 90? Oh, that's weird. That's, that's kind of random looking behavior there. How about rule 110 with rule 150? Same kind of thing. I'm almost not, I uh, don't feel like saving that one. How about if we do it the other way around, rule 150 with rule 110? Boring. How about rule 90 with rule 110? Boring. How about rule 30 with rule 110? Combine two of my favorites. Oh my gosh. They don't play well together. Let's try it the other way around. This one might maybe a bit more interesting. 